Shalom, friends. Uh, welcome to another uh, webinar in the series that Hidush is offering uh, to the English-speaking community. Uh, we are blessed today to be joined by uh, rabbis, um, lawyers, uh, activists, um, and uh, in many ways, uh, this is the mix uh, that Hidush is reaching out to uh, with the hope that these webinars will not only uh, be informative but will motivate uh, individuals and uh, organizations and uh, synagogues and groups uh, for um, uh, action, uh, for being part of an effort uh, to make a difference and bring Israel uh, closer to the uh, vision and values uh, that we espouse and that it isn't just Hidush espousing or inventing but rather nothing more and nothing less than going back to Israel's own declaration of independence promise for freedom of religion and conscience and full social and political equality regardless of religion. Mm -hmm. uh, we are grateful. Uh, let me uh, mute everybody. Really? Mm. Just a minute. Mm. Okay, and uh, Dan, uh, you need to unmute yourself. Uh, in a minute, I'll uh, turn to you. Uh, as uh, in throughout our series, we are grateful to our partners. Uh, who share our values and uh, and a commitment to Israel and to making Israel the country and the state of our values. Uh, the Ruach uh, Hidush, Rabbis and Cantors for Religious Freedom and Equality in Israel, JPLAN, the Jewish Pluralism Legal Action Network, uh, and uh, the Association of American uh, Jewish Lawyers and Jurists. They are all represented in this um, in this call, and uh, I mentioned rabbis and uh, and uh, lawyers and activists. I should say, uh, especially on this occasion, that we are honored to have a leading scholar uh, joining us as well, who spoke in the past, and we just exchanged a few words and. Is willing to be speaking again on this very topic of LGBTQ uh, from a rabbinic perspective, and I'm grateful to Rabbi Professor Elliot Dorf uh, for being with us. Uh, so, uh, Daniel Kiel, uh, among Israelis and many individuals who are part of the human rights, civil liberties uh, community uh, throughout the world, uh, his name is well known and is usually synonymous with the Association of Civil Rights in Israel. He is the voice, he is the face, he is the ongoing connection, and I'm saying ongoing connection because some key um, officers and uh, staffers of the Association of Civil Rights are changing over the years, but the one fixture <laughs> that I go back decades uh, in, in recalling our association uh, is Dan Yakir, the chief legal counsel of the association, which is sort of the Israeli parallel of uh, ACLU, uh, and a leading voice in advancing LGBTQ uh, equality in Israel among many other aspects of the fight, the struggle for civil liberties and, and democracy in Israel. Um, so I'm grateful to Dan for uh, agreeing to speak with us um, as in the past we are recording and shortly after the conclusion of this webinar in a couple of days uh, a recording will be made available and I'm sure that you will both want to uh, review it again, but no less importantly, share it with others uh, who may have an interest in the topic. So LGBTQ equality in Israel, how has this unfolded from the um, founding of the State of Israel? I asked Dan to say a few things at least in terms of the comparative perspective to other countries. Uh, and uh, include also a reference to the Palestinian Authority 
um, its relevance is both when we look at the LGBTQ issue, uh, but also interestingly, because uh, the rights and equality of LGBTQ is so often impacted, adversely impacted by the unholy alliance of religion and state. Um, so religious aspect, aspects, political aspects, legal aspects, there's no better expert uh, than Dani Akir and the microphone is yours. Thank you very much, Julie, for inviting me. It's an honor, and you are a longtime partner to many shared battles for freedom of religion. Um, this is our jubilee year, and I started uh, working as a lawyer uh, more than 32 years ago, but starting being active with ACRI as a, as a law student 40 years ago. So only because of, uh, of time past, I'm, I'm so associate, associated with ACRI. Uh, LGBTQ rights is, is one of the major topics we deal with and dealt in, in many years. And I'll start with the foundation of the State of Israel. When the State of Israel was founded in 1948, all the vast legislation that the British Mandate government passed in, in Palestine stayed intact. And that included the, uh, the, the Penal Code of 1936, uh, that included a chapter that was called the Offenses Against Morality. And one of those offenses one of the one of the sections of, of this chapter was the uh, offenses against nature that included both the uh, bestiality and sodomy law so any uh, uh, a sex between two men and, and only men uh, there was never uh, an offense against sex between two women but sex between two uh, uh, men was an offense punishable by up to 10 years. Um, there is a very interesting historical uh, research about, about uh, uh, charges that were brought during the Monday day, Monday days uh, on this uh, uh, offense of, of sodomy law and uh, at the, and the second attorney general, who was Chaim Cohen, issued a directive to the police. It, uh, as far as I know, there isn't any research about the historical background of how he came to issue such a directive, but the directive ordered the police not to open an investigation in a case of a sexual encounter of two men uh, if it complies with three conditions that it was that the sex was between two uh, 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 that, that the minor was not involved that the, there were two adults uh, having sex in the privacy of their homes and because of that the uh, uh, offense was not uh, was rarely uh, 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 it, um, was rarely applied, uh, um, unlike the common uh, 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 the common idea. Uh, uh, two scholars found that some cases where men were charged under the sodomy law, but, but they were they were quite rare. But the mere fact that there was an offense stating that sex between two men was illegal and the common knowledge was that homosexuality as such was illegal, although that was not uh, the case, uh, had a very negative effect over uh, rights of, of gays. They were under threat uh, of harassment by the police uh, there were problems with serving in the army, teachers uh, were interrogated, in some cases were fired from their uh, 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 posts uh, because they were deemed uneducational or not, not the right example for youth, and, and, and it had an adverse effect 
over the rights of, of gays in Israel. Uh, there were a few private bills introduced uh, uh, to the Knesset, either to repeal the, the offense or at least to uh, uh, reduce the punishment instead of 10 years to reduce it to three years, but there was never never a majority in the Knesset to support such bills since the, since the foundation of, of the state of Israel, only most of the governments, or uh, I think all of them until the current government were, uh, uh, were uh, formed by a coalition that included the religious parties uh, that wouldn't accept any changes in the status of, of gays, even repeating the offense was deemed by them as uh, giving le legitimacy uh, to gays and they wouldn't support uh, such a bill. In 1986, the Ministry of uh, Justice introduced a, a big reform, uh, 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 introduced a bill, a governmental bill that would replace the, the whole chapter of uh, offenses against morality uh, with a new chapter, a modernized chapter called uh, sexual offenses. Uh, but they didn't even, although the, the Ministry of Justice uh, supported repealing the offense, they didn't think they will uh, uh, have a majority in the Knesset, in our parliament, so they didn't introduce, they didn't suggest any change in that section. Uh, during the hearings at the, during the discussion of the bill in the constitution and the law uh, committee of the Knesset, uh, Shulamit Aloni, which was the, the, the uh, uh, leader of, of, of the Rats, which is now Meretz party, and a long-standing uh, proponent, proponent of, of, of uh, gay rights, LGBTQ rights. She, uh, uh, she suggested to, to repeal the section and during the discussion, the section was repealed and instead of that section, a, a totally different section was inserted and when it came back to the plenary of the uh, Knesset for a final vote of the bill, nobody discussed this change that was made during the discussions in the committee and it passed without any uh, public debate. <coughs> so we, we suddenly woke in, 80, in 1986 to a new morning when the uh, uh, when the offense, the sodomy law was repealed without any fuss and without any public discussion, of course the the media uh, caught it after a few days, and there was a big celebration about that. That was the first step of removing the the derogatory uh, uh, section that, that implied that, that any uh, uh, relationship between two men is uh, is illegal and, and amoral. Uh, that was a very important step, but there was no protection to rights of the LGBTQ uh, community. Uh, and that was the, the second uh, step. Uh, in the spring of 1989, uh, a flight attendant from El Al, Jonathan Danilovic, approached, approached us at ACRI at our Tel Aviv chapter and told us his story. He was living with his partner for more than 10 years. Every flight attendant of El Al gets a gets free tickets for his or her spouse, either a married spouse or a common law spouse that is an unmarried uh, a, a spouse, unmarried partner. And he applied uh, for uh, uh, a ticket for, for his same-sex spouse, but El Al refused and says, 
we do not uh, recognize same-sex partners. You are not entitled for a free ticket. Uh, he decided to sue. That was the first time that such a case was brought before the court to uh, uh, to fight discrimination against uh, uh, a gay couple, and we filed the uh, uh, the case in the labor court of Tel Aviv in the spring of 1989. At that year, I was studying in Washington, D.C., in the wonderful uh, program of the New Israel Fund uh, uh, that created a bar of Israeli human rights lawyers by sending us to, to study a master's degree in human rights in Washington, D.C., at the American U University, and then coming back to Israel and working for a year, also sponsored by the New Israel Fund, uh, uh, in a human rights organization in Israel. As I said, I was active in ACRI as a student, but this scholarship allowed me for the first time to join ACRI as a lawyer. I came back on September 1st, 1989. So the suit was already filed a few months before, but it was delayed. Uh, uh, as the Israeli justice system is not very quick, and 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 this this case especially had a bad luck. The first judge, the first judge dealing with the case uh, was the president of the labor court in Tel Aviv, but he was very sick, and then he died. And that, that case moved to a second judge. Uh, her fortune was much better, and and before she was able to. To decide the case, she was elevated to the National Labor Court, which is the appellate court of our labor court system, and then it passed to a third uh, a judge. During that uh, uh, during that period, uh, I was approached by uh, I, I, as I came back from the United States during my stay there. I interned with the lesbian and gay rights project, as it was called back then of the ACLU in New York. And I studied a lot from the, from the fights that were going on in the United States. And I approached the uh, LGBT association, Ha'aguda. They are also called Ha'aguda, Ha'aguda Shmirat the LGBT National Association and had a meeting with their political and, and lobby arm. And they suggested to uh, draft a bill and to propose it as a private bill in the Knesset to, uh, 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 to uh, protect LGBT in the workplace. We had a, a equal uh, protection, equal rights uh, uh, act in um, Anti-Discrimination in Employment Act that was acted in 1988, but it didn't cover uh, uh, discrimination uh, on the basis of sexual orientation. And the suggestion was to uh, 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 propose an amendment to the Equal Opportunities and Employment Act to, uh, um, to, to cover discrimination on the basis of sexual sexual orientation. I must admit that I didn't think that there is any chance that the Knesset will approve such an amendment, but I thought that it was important that the Knesset will address for the first time the issue of equality to LGBTQ uh, by discussing this private bill. And to my surprise and amazement, the, the uh, uh, bill uh, went quite swiftly. Uh, the, the government decided to, it was proposed as a private bill, but the government decided to, to uh, uh, support the bill. And during the hearing at the Labor and Welfare Committee of the Knesset was in charge which was in charge on discussing and preparing the bill for a final e reading at the plenary of the Knesset. Even the religious uh, Knesset, the Orthodox uh, Knesset members uh, uh, 
came to the meeting, they stressed that, uh, that of course, they don't condone homosexuality. They think it's a mental illness and, and gays has to be treated for that, but there isn't any reason to discriminate in the workplace against on the basis of sexual orientation. So they decided to abstain from the vote. And in the middle of the hearing of the, the, the lawsuit that we filed against Al Al, the uh, amendment was passed and, and uh, took uh, uh, into effect. So in the final ruling of the labor court of Tel Aviv, it, the judge, the third judge that was assigned to the case, re relied heavily on the amendment that was passed recently by the Knesset and uh, uh, ruled in favor of Jonathan Danilovich, the flight attendant of El Al, and ordered El Al to give same-sex uh, partners the same rights and benefits that, is, uh, that are accorded to opposite-sex uh, partners. Somehow El Al decided to uh, to uh, appeal the ruling over and over again. It was appealed to the National Labor Court, who sat in an expanded panel and decided unanimously to dismiss the appeal in a very important ruling. Also dealing for the first time uh, uh, with the discrimination in the workplace and then Al wouldn't put it into rest and decided to file a petition with the, with the High Court of Justice. And uh, although there isn't a right to appeal from the National Labor Court, which is the highest court in, of, of the land in regard to labor uh, law, uh, in uh, principal cases, there is a very narrow path that allows uh, 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 litigants to, to file a petition with the High Court of Justice, which is our Supreme Court. And in very rare cases, the Supreme Court will hear a case against a decision of the National Labor Court and will decide it. Usually they differ to the, to the, expert, the expertise of the National Labor Court in labor law. But because of the importance of the case and the, the wide reaching, uh, um, be, because it was the first time that, that equality to gays was uh, discussed, the Supreme Court had the hearing and in, uh, very important in, in the first, uh, in the first uh, uh, precedent of the Supreme Court ever discussing equality to the LGBTQ. Uh, 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 community uh, uh, dismissed the petition in a two to one verdict. Uh, uh, the two liberal judges on the panel, uh, uh, Judge Barak and Judge Dorner, uh, uh, spoke very eloquently about the rights of, 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 of gays, as, as Judge Barak wrote in the decision. The uh, um, the the longing of a flight attendant of a, 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 with a same-sex partner, the longing and the separation of a same-sex uh, partner, a flight attendant who has a same-sex partner is not different from the longing and the, 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 uh, uh, um, and the separation of a, an opposite opposite sex partner uh, and there isn't any reason to discriminate against gays in the workplace. The dissenting opinion uh, uh, was written by Judge Kedmi, who said that uh, who said that, that a, a same sex couple is not a couple. I don't know how to to even translate it. It's uh, legally it's uh, it's far-fetched, but he relied on some sources in the Bible, and, and the reasoning is quite preposterous, uh, and it was quite ridiculed uh, after it. And an interesting uh, chain of events, uh, if you, that was in 1996, a few years later, I think it was in 1999, 
we filed a petition against the decision of the Minister of uh, Education, Zvulun Hammer, who was the leader of the Orthodox Re National Religious Party, Hamafdal. Um, the educational television station was back then a department of the Ministry of Education. And they had an, a, a weekly program where a famous uh, a star within youth was discussing with uh, uh, juveniles uh, uh, relevant and actual topics in the news. And uh, one of the programs was uh, uh, was discussing the, the issue of being gay with a gay teenager, a lesbian teenager, and a bisexual teenager. And when the Minister of Education heard that this program is going to be aired at the Education on Television, he ordered them not to broadcast it because it's uneducational and not pedagogical. And might, uh, might uh, persuade uh, uh, minors in, in uh, not in the right direction. Uh, we, we actually, the National uh, LGBT uh, uh, Association and the National Lesbian Association filed a petition against the legality of the decision of the Minister of Education, stating that he has no authority to intervene in the content of the uh, of the television station, and uh, we find also expert opinions by a psychologist, by a social worker, by a professor of the media, to show how important and how educational such a program is. So the interesting uh, coincidence, which I don't really believe is a coincidence, is the same panel that heard the case of the flight attendants of Al Al said in this uh, uh, in this petition. And a few months after the hearing, to our amazement, the dissenting judge was assigned to write uh, the unanimous decision uh, uh, overturning the decision of the Minister of Education. And very uh, uh, un unlikely for Judge Barak and Judge Dormer, who are among the most opinionated judges who ever sat on the Supreme Court, they didn't add a word to the very brief uh, verdict that uh, Judge Kedmi uh, wrote, and I think they wanted to save face for him and, and do him a favor by giving him the opportunity to, to write a, a, an opinion uh, who is in favor of, 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 of the gay community. And uh, the decision it, itself is quite poorly written uh, as a as a op-ed uh, 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 in the newspaper, not as a not as a legal opinion by the Supreme Court, but 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 the headlines that it made uh, uh, was extraordinary, and the, the 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 effect of the opinion was the 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 public effect of the opinion was was much. Uh, uh, be much more important than the content of the decision. Uh, there was a lot of uh, media and television cameras who came back then uh, in 1998. Today, we don't have the photo op at the Supreme Court when it uh, releases important judgments because uh, we get a phone call from the Secretariat of the Court stating that at such and such hour, the decision will be published at the website of the Supreme Court. So a maximum a journalist can, can come to my office and, and, uh, and, uh, um, and get a photo of me trying to refresh the website and to, to see the decision on, on the website. But back then we, we, we had a real photo of when we were, were invited to, to a hearing where the court uh, 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 
read the parts of, of the decision and said what the result was. And immediately I was interviewed after this big victory. And I said that both as a human rights uh, a lawyer and as the, being gay myself, I was very happy and satisfied by the decision of the court. And I got a phone call from my father who wasn't very glad me being gay and, and saying, why did you have to mention that you are gay? Why is it relevant to the issue? And until his last day, he wouldn't. Uh, uh, it, it didn't came to terms uh, with the issue, although he was a loving father all the way. Anyway, uh, um, after that, the, the uh, um, battle continued to ensure the, mainly to ensure the rights of same-sex couples. And in an, in an upside logic, uh, I guess most of you or all of you are well aware that we, we don't have any uh, civil marriages in Israel. Uh, or according to our family law, personal law, every person is born into a religious uh, community and he or she can only wed according to the religious or ordinances uh, 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 of the religion he, he or she is part of. Uh, and there is a, in, in the population registrar, every infant is born into a religion and his or her religion is, is registered officially and he or she can only marry according to the elements of the religion he is part of. And because of that, this is the upside the logic. Because of that, Israel was quite a, a uh, pioneer in, in developing a, a very, uh, very thorough rights to unmarried couples because of the fact that Jews, for instance, cannot marry a non-Jew according to Jewish law. Uh, uh, any interreligious or interracial couple could not get married in Israel. So th this has two consequences. One, as I mentioned, the, there were about more than 50, more than 40 laws that were amended, uh, laws that give rights and benefits to married couples. More than 40 laws were amended during the 50s and 60s to include also unmarried couples. And, and at the time, this was a, uh, Israel was pioneer in that uh, uh, sense. And, and the upside logic is that because of that, because of the restriction of getting married in Israel, we have this very, uh, um, very uh, detailed legislation that covers almost, almost all rights and benefits that are afforded to married couples are accorded also to unmarried couples. And we could use this legal situation to, to, uh, um, to demand that those rights will also be accorded to same-sex couples in, in light of equality. Although we don't have a constitution, back then even we didn't have the basic laws uh, uh, that dealt with human rights, the Supreme Court held that as a democracy, equality is a basic right in every quality. You cannot to talk about the, the democracy without equality. So the government should, the government is under an obligation to treat every person equally. Uh, and, and we could use all those laws that, that gave rights to non-married couples and to, to interpret them as covering uh, also same-sex couples. And I give you, I'll give you only a few examples in the 2005, 2004, I filed a case also in the labor court of Tel Aviv against the National 
insurance uh, institution, which is our social security uh, uh, system, uh, on behalf of a widower who asked to get the uh, a widow allowance after his same-sex partner died. And the National Insurance uh, Institution claimed that the, the national insurance law applies only to opposite sex couples and not to same sex couples. Uh, they took a lot of time to respond to our uh, uh, lawsuit. And at the, at the end, they uh, involved the attorney general, uh, who was an uh, many Mazuz, who was one of the most liberal. Uh, Attorney Generals uh, uh, in regard to the LGBTQ community, and he filed, he intervened in the case and filed a far reaching uh, 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 position that said that all rights and benefits uh, of, of under the national insurance law must be accorded also to same sex couples. So it covered not only the, the uh, a widow allowance as we uh, demanded in the case, but all the other aspects of, of social, social, social security covered by the law. Um, in a, a, one of the most important heroes of, of, of the uh, 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 battle of, of equality, to uh, uh, same-sex couples is Adir Steiner, who was a widower of an officer of the IDF, of the army. His uh, late partner was a medical uh, doctor in the army, uh, a very high uh, ranking, uh, um, he held high-ranking uh, uh, positions in the medical forces of the army. And when he died of cancer, uh, Adil Steiner didn't get any of the uh, uh, rights that accorded to uh, widows or widowers of army officers. So they, there were three cases uh, surrounding his situation who were held by the uh, legal, the Human Rights Clinic at the Tel Aviv Faculty of Law, Tel Aviv University Faculty of Law, um, regarding uh, the pension and the uh, and the other monetary uh, uh, rights that uh, are accorded to widowers of, of, of an army officer, and I filed a petition with the High Court of Justice or Supreme Court against the Minister of Defense to, to uh, give him the, the, the more symbolic rights of a widower to be mentioned in the his call in the memorial uh, uh, book that the Ministry of Defense holds of, of any fallen or, or, or soldier or, or an officer who died during uh, service to get invited to the yearly, uh, the, the medical forces of the army refused to invite him to the yearly memorial service to uh, um, the deceased uh, uh, officers of the medical forces. And there is a very small allowance to, uh, to, 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 <coughs> to, to do something in the memory of, of the deceased. Um, in the monetary cases, the, 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 the Solicitor General's office decided to, to, to settle the case with Adir. And, and after, uh, uh, after a rehearing at the, uh, there is a, a commission, an advisory commission of, 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 of comprised of, of, of mainly of parents of, 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 of fallen soldiers that advised the Minister of, of Defense uh, about the policy on such issues. Uh, they had their, the, the, the lawyer from the Solicitor General's office who thought our petition is, is, is justified, asked this commission to re 
reevaluate the, the uh, their position. They had a very heated and emotional debate, and, and they couldn't reach a decision. And at last, the Minister of Defense decided in our favor. Uh, uh, this was Yitzhak uh, Mordechai, which who uh, wasn't a very liberal person himself, but. There is nothing like personal acquaintance with uh, gays, and not only in, in, uh, with gays in general, but, but uh, uh, the, the deceased, the, the deceased partner of uh, Dean Steiner was the um, chief medical officer of the of the Southern District when Itzhak Mordechai was the general in charge of the Southern District. So, because of this personal acquaintance, he decided to to uh, give uh, same-sex partners of, of fallen soldiers the same rights that are accorded to opposite-sex partners. Uh, another major case was in relation to marriages. Unlike the situation in the United States and Canada, where the fight for same-sex marriages were in, was intertwined with the fight for the rights of benefits that are accorded only to married couples and not to uh, uh, unmarried couples. Uh, the situation, as I stated, the situation in Israel was different when almost all of the rights and benefits of married couples uh, was accorded to unmarried couples, and, and, and through the case-by-case -case basis, we were able to, to also apply them to same-sex couples. But, but still, the, the, the significance and the importance of, 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 the, uh, of the institution of marriage in Israeli society is very high, and many same-sex partners wanted to, to get this legitimacy, this recognition by, by the state and by the society and by their close families of a marriage. Of course, in Israel, as we don't have any civil marriages, it's, it's, um, it's hard to imagine that we will ever uh, 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 get to same-sex marriages, but I hope that when we ever get the, to the basic right of a civil marriage, it will also cover uh, same-sex marriages. But as the world changed and more and more um, uh, countries recognize same-sex marriages, it opened up the opportunity for Israeli same-sex couple to get married abroad. Most of the jurisdictions uh, demand that at least one of the couple or, or maybe both couples are either uh, citizens or residents of the, 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 the jurisdiction. But when Canada adopted same-sex marriage and started in, uh, in, in Toronto, uh, they opened it up to total strangers, that is, both uh, the couple can be neither a citizen nor a resident of Canada in order to be able to get married at City Hall in Toronto. So many, not many, but, 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 but it started the fashion of uh, and mostly gays uh, 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 flying to Toronto to get married. And when they came back and wanted to the Ministry of Interior to register them as married, the Ministry of Interior, of course, refused. And two of the couples approached me uh, back in 2005, and we decided to uh, 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 file a petition with the High Court of Justice and demand that the Ministry of Interior will register them as married. And also by an upside logic, because of the restrictions of the uh, religious law, because of the fact that a Jew cannot marry in Israel, a non-Jew, uh, um, 
in the 50s and 60s, uh, 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 somebody developed the notion of Cyprus marriages. Cyprus is the closest jurisdiction to Israel, and uh, um, a Jew, an Israeli Jew and a Christian flew to uh, an Israeli male Jew and a Christian female, in 1960, flew to Cyprus, got married, and got back to Israel and asked the Ministry of Interior to be registered as married, and the Ministry refused. The case approached this, uh, when it got to the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court uh, ordered the Ministry of Interior to register them as uh, married, stating that the clerk at the Ministry of Interior has no uh, discretion to decide whether the, the, the marriage is legal or not. The, 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 the registrar is only for statistical reasons. And if a couple produce, and according to our uh, family law or personal law, any change of status that was made abroad according to the law in that jurisdiction, is uh, applicable in Israel, but in any case, the court stated that this is only for statistical reasons. The clerk doesn't have any, doesn't have any discretion, and he must register the couple as a Jew. And when we filed the petition in 2005, we said this is an identical case, the Toronto marriage, identical to the Cyprus marriage. The a clerk at the Ministry of Interior has no discretion, and, and the couple must be registered as a, a as married. Um, usually, our Supreme Court sits in panels of three. There are fifteen judges on the Supreme Court, but but because of the workloads and uh, because they deal with all appeals from the district courts, not all of them very important. And they sit usually in panels of three because of the importance and uh, the sensitivity of the issue. And a large panel of seven was convened to hear this case. And in a six to one decision, the court accepted our petition and ordered the uh, Ministry of Interior to register same sex couples who were married abroad to, uh, as married. The single, the lone dissenter, Judge Eliakim Rubinstein, uh, was the only orthodox judge on the panel, and in a very interesting, uh, in a very interesting research by the leading uh, legal empirical uh, uh, researchers, uh, Professor Karen Margal from the Hebrew, the law faculty of the Hebrew University. She, find, she found out by reviewing thousands of decisions of the Supreme Court that, that, that there isn't any statistical, uh, uh, um, not clearance, but statistical, uh, well, I lost the word, that, that you can't prove statistically that it's either gender or race or any other factor influence the outcome of, of the decision, the only factor which is statistically valid to influence the outcome of, of a decision is the, 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 the fact that, that the person is religious and orthodox. And, and this is one example where the, 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 the uh, uh, beliefs, uh, the personal beliefs uh, led the judge to, to the outcome of the case. And I, I must stress in favor and, uh, uh, of Judge Rubinstein that uh, although his, his personal beliefs about same-sex marriages or same-sex relationships be as it may, he stressed that, that same-sex couples must be accorded the same economical uh, benefits and rights. But the issue of, of marriage, he stated that the, the, the uh, uh, the symbolic uh, uh, meaning of marriage is a, a different issue, and it, 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 it's not the task of the court to decide that. It's a social issue, it's a sensitive issue, and only the class of our parliament can decide whether to recognize same-sex marriages or not.
Um, the time is running, and I want to get to. So, uh, <coughs> yeah, hey, bring us bring us up to date regarding surrogacy and what happens at the current Knesset and the unique angle of Ra'am, the Islamist party, actually being responsible for the outcome of votes uh, on uh, LGBTQ uh, issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so in the last decade, the main issue, uh, uh, the main fights were around uh, the new model of, of family, uh, or, or the new model of, of family of, 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 of LGBTQ. One model is, is, is uh, sharing uh, parenthood when a gay person wants to be a father and wants a mother to be involved and he, he makes a contract with a, a woman who bear his, uh, their mutual child and, and they are both parents. They are both sharing parenthood without being a couple. And uh, that is that is quite clear cut, unlike uh, a divorced couple or any other couple who that doesn't share the same, doesn't live under the same roof uh, until until another person uh, gets involved, either the father or the mother, uh, as a spouse. Uh, and he or she is a third parent, but under Israeli law, when there is a father and a mother who are, who are qualified and well suited to parenting, uh, uh, the third parent, although he shares all the duties and, 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 and is a, a psychological parent, uh, to the child has no uh, legal status. And there was a few cases uh, applied with the family court to uh, acknowledge a, a, a third or fourth uh, parent uh, uh, stating that it is uh, the, the, the uh, best interest of, of the child and that, that the third parent would be recognized, but the courts uh, uh, in all those cases dismissed the cases and said that, that, that under Israeli law, uh, uh, there isn't any uh, uh, option of recognizing a third uh, parent. There were a few cases of, of, of same-sex couples who, who parted who, uh, uh, and the, usually the biological father or mother claimed that there were that, that they were never a couple or that, that the decision to bring a child was not a mutual decision, tried to deny rights to the uh, uh, separate uh, uh, partner. But uh, the courts in, in most of those cases, in almost all of the cases decided, even if, if there wasn't a, a legal uh, status of, of, of the partner, although, although uh, after a very prolonged battle that got to the Supreme Court, uh, same-sex partners can adopt uh, uh, the child, uh, the, the child of the partner, but not all of them bothered to do so. Uh, uh, so even if the partner didn't have he or she a, a, a legal uh, status as a parent, the court decided under the best interest of the child accorded the visiting rights and then custody to uh, uh, the other partner as well. Uh, a big, a very long battle was around surrogacy. The, the uh, law, the Israeli law on surrogacy from 2000, I think, uh, um, allowed a surrogacy only for a man, only for a man and a woman. And when a gay couple uh, approached the uh, commission that has to, to approve the, uh, uh, the contract with the surrogate mother, uh, um, uh, the Ministry of, of Health said that the law does
does not cover same-sex couples. And after a very prolonged battle of two petitions to the Supreme Court, a, a committee who uh, decided to, to amend the law and the Minister of Health who introduced, she introduced a, an amendment to the law that didn't pass the Knesset. Uh, um, and after the court, the court uh, gave uh, a chance over and over again to, to amend the law and, and, and wrote that if, if the Knesset will not change the law, this would make the law unconstitutional. The Knesset didn't uh, um, lift, uh, didn't do that. And, and, and finally, the court uh, decided that the law is unconstitutional. And within six months, the, the, the minute Three of health that must uh, introduce a directive that will allow uh, same-sex couples to enter into surrogacy. And recently, that directive was published by the current uh, Minister of Health, Nitsan Holovich, who is gay and uh, important uh, proponent of, of LGBTQ rights. And the, uh, this mission was completed. Uh, there is still a problem with adoption. The, the, the Ministry of Welfare says that, that in, in, in the regular course, uh, there, there is a small, uh, um, there isn't enough children for adoption in Israel. And, and the, the official expert opinion of the welfare ministry is to, to prefer uh, uh, opposite sex couples on same-sex couples. Uh, uh, so gays cannot adopt in Israel. Uh, um, and there is a pending case before the Supreme Court around this issue. Uh, in recent years, we started to deal with the uh, transgender rights. This is a minority within a minority, a marginalized minority with very special needs. And, and then um, a, um, um, on all aspects of life, there was a lot of discrimination in the workplace against transgenders. There was an important decision of the national, national labor court uh, uh, interpreting the, uh, uh, um, the, the prohibition to discriminate a, a, an employee uh, because of gender to, to include also uh, sexual and uh, gender I, I, identity uh, and to prohibit uh, discrimination against transgenders. Uh, we had the case of a transgender prisoner. Uh, she was uh, imprisoned in, <coughs> in the male uh, in the male prison. She wanted to, to start the process of, of, of changing sex. Uh, Prison authority would not recognize her as a transgender. And, and after we filed a petition against the prison authority, uh, they moved, uh, moved her to the female uh, prison and, and allowed her to start the, the process of, of, of uh, sex change. Uh, still in order to have a, a sex uh, operation or sex change, uh, a person needs to get a permission, uh, a clearance from an expert uh, committee. Uh, uh, Israeli law does not, uh, does not recognize the right of a person to, to decide for his or herself what his or her gender is. Uh, although the, in recent years there was a legal, I an mean, important legal opinion by the Deputy Attorney General that, that uh, sex operation is not a, a, a condition of changing uh, um, the, the, the sex in, in the population registrar, and it can be uh, if this committee of experts will approve, it can be done even before or without a uh, sex uh, operation. This is well, there, was a, there was a question regarding this point. 
How do the medical plans, Kupat Cholim, or the Ministry of Health, deal with this issue, and do they cover the uh, the operation that's required? Yeah, there, there was a fight, and, and, and as far as I know, it, it is covered by, by the National Health uh, 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 Act. Uh, uh, the operation about but it's only done, I think, in Tel Shomer. There is a problem with, with the lack of, of, of expert uh, 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 physicians who can do it. And some of the transgenders have to go abroad to get this uh, operation. And, 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 and there was a case against a, a private uh, health insurance company that, that, that said that this is not a medical necessity, but only an aesthetic, aesthetic operation. And the court uh, did not accept it. Uh, the court said that, that, that it's a major uh, uh, operation of, of, of self-identity. It cannot be called a, a cosmetic uh, operation. And it is covered under the, the private uh, uh, health policy. Of this private company. And there was an additional question now whether if they go overseas for a sex change, is it recognized in the population registry uh, as a basis for change of registration? Yeah, if, if, if it was done under the, 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 the uh, uh, if, if it was approved by this expert uh, committee, and uh, there isn't any problem of uh, change of changing the sex at the uh, population registrar. So before we uh, reach the uh, the end, uh, two comments and uh, one uh, it, you know uh, uh, one question that that I'll repeat. The two comments are, as always, you are wonderful and you are indeed the leading expert on those issues, and we are all grateful to you. Uh, you have certainly enlightened many who joined this call and many who will be watching it uh, as to how uh, this issue has unfolded in Israel. So the two comments are, uh, one lesson that I hope you take away from uh, Dania Kier's presentation is nothing happens by itself, nothing comes easy, and a key element in advancing LGBTQ rights and more generally speaking, religious freedom issues and civil liberties is the willingness and the ability to pursue these battles in the courts. Politicians rarely can be relied on and their dealing and willing takes priority over commitment to those core values. So for anyone who is considering, you know, how do I relate to these advocacy organizations in Israel and aren't they making too much noise? Aren't they, uh, you know, um, sort of uh, uh, eroding our ability to support Israel? Nothing regarding a vision of Israel which is inclusive, pluralistic, democratic, and celebrates civil liberties will happen if we do not employ legal advocacy. The other uh, point is just because uh, uh, Dan did not speak about it and we won't have time to speak about it at length, but just know that in um, a number of polls that Hidush conducted over the years, the result is very clear. So when, for instance, we ask the question, do you, and the survey is done with the adult Jewish population in Israel, do you support the state of Israel recognizing the rights of LGBTQ couples, whether through marriage or through uh, legal unions? 70% respond in support. So amazingly, Israel, which is considered to be a rather traditional society, on this issue has gone a long way since the early days, including the prejudices that were uh, 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 that were uh, uh, exemplified by the Russian Olim. 
has gone a long way in terms of embracing the equality of LGBTQ, and there is no question now as to the majority of the public of the adult Jewish population supporting this. And this brings me to the one question that I hope that you will still re re uh, refer to, and that is the Palestinian Authority, Palestinian uh, uh, LGBTQ individuals, uh, and uh, Mansour Abbas and the uh, Ra'am party. How does all of that fit into the picture? I don't want to uh, end with an unhappy note, but the situation in the Palestinian among the Palestinian society, both in Israel itself, of, of Palestinian Arab citizens of Israel, and even worse so, uh, Palestinians under the Palestinian Authority, are much less liberal uh, towards LGBTQ, uh, um, because of societal and religious reasons that I, I got back from a hearing at the Supreme Court only three hours ago, I, I thought I would come back much earlier, but we had to wait for three hours because the panel that was about to hear our case was entangled with a criminal appeal of three Arab Israeli brothers who tried to stab to death their relative, a gay minor from the same village and, and the Supreme Court heard their appeal against their conviction and against the imprisonment of 14 years that, that the one who actually stabbed the, the, the boy uh, uh, got. Uh, this is quite a rare case, but, uh, but it still happens. And there was a case a few years ago where when two brothers that tried, tried to stab to death uh, their brother, who was uh, near the, the hostel for youth in Tel Aviv, Beit Ror, Beit Ror, the House of Freedom, there is a hostel for, for, for youth, for minors or, or, or persons until the age of 21, who uh, get thrown out of their homes, both Jews and Arabs. Uh, um, and they tried to stab him to death uh, in, in the street near this hostel. Uh, the Arab, the Palestinian society is much more conservative, and and, uh, um, and especially when Ram, uh, the the Arab Islamic fundamentalist party, is part of the coalition. It's very hard for the, the left-wing liberal parties, the uh, Labour Party and Merit, who, which are strong advocates for LGBTQ rights to pass uh, legislation, any amendment or any change of policy towards uh, 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 expanding the rights of LGBTQ because uh, it might shake the coalition, which is shaken already, uh, because Ram cannot uh, support, uh, as an Islamic uh, party, uh, cannot support uh, such moves. So the, 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 the picture is not only pink, the, 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 there was great advancement in a relative short period, uh, but the challenges to, to get to equality are still quite uh, enormous, and, and the, the, the battle is not over yet. Well, so you are right, Dan. Uh, we shouldn't be ending on that note. We should be ending on a happy note. So in addition to uh, sharing with you that our next webinar will be on June 1st at the same time, and we'll be discussing who is a Jew in anticipation of Shavuot, the festival of Shavuot, with Dr. Kobi Shapira of the uh, uh, Ministry of Justice, and who is an expert on Jewish law. Fascinating presentation, very diverse sources of Jewish law on conversion. Uh, the final words are yours. What happy note would you like to end with? Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, uh, yes, I have one example uh, during the last Pride Week, uh, almost a year ago, uh, 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 there was uh, a quite popular owner of a 
Tehini factory, Tehini Arza, uh, and she is the Palestinian Arab herself who decided to uh, donate uh, 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 from the revenues of the Tehini to the LGBT and uh, Q National Association. She was under fierce attack from her uh, from her own community, but there were also voices within the Palestinian Israeli uh, uh, society who supported her. So there are also changes within the, the Arab society, and I hope that the advancement and, and equality and the more uh, uh, acceptance towards uh, LGBTQ persons uh, will continue to strive. Well, uh, with this final note, uh, I think that it's fair to say that as many of these issues, there is a mixed bag. So yes, her pioneering and courageous move uh, was really inspiring. And at the same time on Israeli television and news reports, you could see in quite a number of uh, Arab uh, markets that threw out through to the floor all the Trina uh, products that were uh, made by uh, by Aza. Uh, so the battle is really waged and continues. And that is why it is so important for liberal activists, for liberal rabbis, cantors, jurists, and communal leaders to understand the critical need to play a role in fighting for a Israel of our values. Uh, Dan is a wonderful a symbol and, and role model of that ongoing struggle. There is hardly any serious uh, progress made on the human rights front that the Association for Civil Rights in Israel has not been uh, on the forefront of that. And Dan is leading the pack. So thank you, Dan, for a wonderful presentation. And uh, not only should we be hoping for better days, we should be making better days come. Uh, Toda and Shalom until June 1st.